Hi, I'm Donna Neuger, Youth Development Educator with 4-H Youth Development for University of Illinois, serving DuPage, Kane, and Kendall Counties. And I welcome you today to our STEM challenges. This challenge allows you to explore your very own backyard, because I'll bet there's a lot of things you've never really noticed, if, unless you look really carefully. So with this challenge, we're gonna take a brief tour and look at the phenology or the changes that occur with plants over their seasonal life cycle. So join me as we look at different stages and then use that as a way to give yourself some motivation and some ideas to look around your very own yards to see what you have. The first thing we're going to look at today are flowers. Notice that Brunera right in front that Brunera just started to bloom today. And as we move over, we'll look at the Corydalus. The Corydalus has been blooming strongly for the last week and a half, and you can tell that it's starting to go on its way out. Mascari is looking great right now. Those great grape hyacinths really last a long time. They're a powerful force in your garden. But look at these. My gosh, can you tell what they are? They're just little sprouts, just little buds coming up through the ground. That's gonna be a really fantastic hosta. And then you look a little farther over and you can see the Siberian iris. Nothing but greens there. They're not even close to being ready to blossom yet. Why so much difference in the same area? Well, that's all due to phenology. Each plant needs a different amount of warmth and sun to be able to bloom. And so that's why we have our different bloom times. That also helps us know a lot about when to take care of our plants by watching this phenology. Within your very own yard, you're going to find that some of the exact same species of plant do not bloom at the same time. Here is a big spread of Solomon seal. This area was once covered with shade by a flowering crab. As you can see, We've got plenty of leafy greens and the variegated foliage, but we don't have any flowers yet. And as you look at this, you can see those little white flowers hanging below the stems. Shows the great difference between different locations. Solomon seal prefers a shady location and it will behave differently when it's happy. Let's examine some shrubs. This gorgeous amelanchier has been going strong for the last several days and it is in full bloom. It attracts butterflies and soon it will have beautiful red berries that are delicious to the birds. The buds on this clethra are just coming out now. It's pretty obvious that this is not going to have any great blooms until summer. But that's a great time for the butterflies because they'll be here this summer to take a look at it and check it out. Spirea van Hootie is not even close to being a beautiful flowering shrub yet, but you can see the little buds there. Those flower buds are developing and getting large and will have lovely blooms in June. This Magnolia stellata with the white flowers, you can tell is getting very close to the end of its blooming period. It has been blooming for the last week and a half. The peach tree in the foreground has nice pink blossoms. We need those blossoms if we're gonna get any peaches this summer. And behind it in the background with the tree house is a very majestic old silver maple that is here since the house was built in 1963. It suffered some storm damage, which just made room for a tree house. But you can see that you've got that reddish tint where the leaf buds are opening up. The hackberry is also beginning to open its, its leaf buds. The chinkapin oak, however, is just barely budding out and doesn't have the same amount of leaf development as the hackberry. This challenge allows you to explore your very own backyard because I'll bet there's a lot of things you've never really noticed if, unless you look really carefully.